Have you ever been to a 131 year old home? Well now, you have. Welcome to the Tyndall House. Follow me inside. Well, if we look over there, we have some big windows over here, pretty much everywhere around the house. And we're also lifted up off the ground. So these were important features to keep the house cool before modern day technology like air conditioning. The other thing you might notice is there's some features that might be missing. Obviously, of course, there's no electricity in here and there's no bathroom. That's what that chamber pot is for. But the other thing that people always ask is where's the kitchen? So where did they actually cook? Well, in a whole separate building. So walking over here, you can see that the kitchen is separated by a breezeway. The whole kitchen lives separately from the house. And there was a reason for this, much like there was a reason for every other aspect of the design of the house. One thing that you might notice is the building is still made of wood. And unfortunately, if there was ever a fire, you couldn't just call the local fire department. You would unfortunately most likely lose your home. The other and more common reason for these, uh, for a separate building is because the kitchen would often be the hottest part of the house. Look at that giant cast iron stove. If it were cranking right now, we wouldn't be able to stand being in here with the windows closed as they were. Here we have one of your more classic butter churns. This is the thing everyone kind of associates with a butter churn. But this over here is actually a much larger butter churn. This one would be cranked by hand and would often be the responsibility of the children. Over here, this is one of our more unique pieces and something that you would see in most Pioneer homes, a pie safe. The pie safe is covered with screens here and is the grandfather for the refrigerator. We have our Hoosier cabinet, again, another staple of Pioneer living. Uh, we often meet guests who say they, oh, my grandmother had one of these, or I remember seeing one of these in my great grandmother's house, and it was a very common commodity. This one's one of our more unique pieces. It's something that I don't think a lot of people have ever seen or even may have considered. This is a cheese press. Why would you need a cheese press? Why do you need to squeeze cheese? When you're making cheese, oftentimes once you, you have, you end up with two products. You end up with whey and you end up with curds. Now, the curds are the cheese parts. That's the thing you want. But if you don't get all that liquid out, the way out, it can go bad fairly quickly. This over here is a bed warmer. Not something you would typically find in Florida. In here, we have the Singer sewing machine. It's a turn of the century piece, and literally everyone and their grandmothers would have had one because you couldn't just go to the store, get something fixed, or even just buy clothing whenever you wanted. A lot of times it would have to be handmade. And speaking of grandmothers, most would assume that this is a grandfather clock. Actually not the case. This is a grandmother clock. The difference between the two of them is that the grandmother clock typically stands a little bit smaller and quite literally has less bells and whistles. They would be a little bit of a simpler chime system and mechanism, while the grandfather clocks would have been a little bit more complex with different melodies and literally bells and whistles. You didn't always have a TV to keep yourself entertained or an iPhone. So, you know, what you could do instead was practice your piano playing. And in the home right now, we have a pedal organ. It was kind of a staple in terms of an entertainment system for the, for the time. Thankfully, the main house is still remains standing with its original floors and walls uh, and just a light touch up uh, so that our guests feel a little bit more welcomed.